Someone just asked me a great question about how to achieve a custom packaging design that has a cutout or a die cut in Adobe Dimension. So I thought it'd be really helpful to make a video for others who may have the same question. In this video, I'm going to go through a few different ways to accomplish the look and the method that works best for you may depend on the design or effect you're trying to achieve as well as the quality of the end result of the rendering. Also, it's going to depend on your computer resources and the amount of time it's going to take to render in Dimension. If you're rendering glass or transparency, or depending on the environment, it's likely going to take much longer to render. So I've set up this example and have the resources gathered here in Adobe Illustrator. And I just have a packaging template for this mock-up design and so this gray shape is the cutout where you'll see the pasta so the first method I'm going to go through is just including this the die cut showing the pasta as part of the decal that's going to go on the box so you're going to search for an image of the product that you're using that you want to see through and I'm going to send that to the back object arrange send to back and I'm going to select the die cut shape and the background and do a command 7 which is a clipping mask or you can do object Clipping mask, make, so command seven on a Mac. Next, I'm going to copy my design. So I'm selecting all but the template. I have it locked. Copy, command C, open up Photoshop. New document. Paste, command V. A smart object is good. And now I'm going to hide the background. The material I'm using is going to be in Adobe Dimension. If you do have a background, then you can save it as a JPEG, but in this case I want the transparency. So go ahead and do File, Save As, a PNG is what we want. And in Adobe Dimension, I'll go ahead and go through the same steps. So first, let's grab one of the boxes in our object library. I'm going to use F to get that in the center of my screen and then you can use your tools to go in and out. Next I'm going to add my material. I've chosen a cardboard. And I need to add a decal. So selecting the box I'm going to click this place decal icon sticky note or go to File, Import, Place Graphic as Decal. Select your ping. depending on your decal, let's do an orbit around the product. So here's our front. 
That's looking pretty good. But to give you an idea of how that's rendered out on my other computer, that's the highest resolution I was getting, so it's a little bit blurry. Here was medium, it's a little grainier, and low was very grainy. Another option would be to just render out the angle that you want. Let me rotate this. So depending on what angle. You could try render like this or you could just render out without the decal and you'll have your box. If you render it out as a PSD you'll have a little bit more customization with the background other than working with a flat image. So here I can change my background on the fly versus selecting the box and having to cut that out. So this brings me to the second option which after you've chosen the angle you'd like would be just to save out whichever angles or sides you're going to show and paste it into Photoshop after the rendering of your background or objects. And you can select your box or select it with a wand and make a mask if you need to. And I would also do a different layer effect. So you may have to paste these in as different layers if you want that same cardboard texture. And G again, Shift G. Go to Pattern, and if we find a texture that matches the paper, let's just try watercolor in this case. Fill it, and then holding down Option, you'll have a little arrow between layers, and you can set the, you can give a texture to just that layer. And then you can add a mask if you don't want the texture on the pasta. You may want to paste in your pasta shape as its own layer to try to add a better drop shadow, which would be more realistic. So I'm going to copy this shape. want to make that in let's see let's do an inner drop shadow and multiply over the pasta. Go ahead and convert that to another smart object.
if your image looks grainy, as long as you've got your design as a smart object, you can go to image, image size, and let's turn our resolution up to 150. If you're creating this for your portfolio, you might as well make it a decent size that you can save out and then resize later if you need it smaller. Command zero. I'm going to mask out the texture over the pasta because we just want it. You can command click the shape and cut that out with your black in the background. You can do a cut on the mask and that will remove the texture from your pasta. You just want the paper effect on the design. Lastly, another option we have for putting this into a dimension would be since we can't create die cuts out of the objects, you have to either place in an object that has the cutout already, or you can make multiple pieces or shapes to apply a decal. So this one's a little bit more complicated. So in this case, let's go back to Illustrator. Let's move this to a new layer and hide it. This time we're going to copy our design. Save it as a PNG again. And replace this decal. We have to move it again. This time we're going to create the shape as its own 3D object. So copy the object shape. I'm going to show you really quick how I made that shape also. You draw a rectangle and using your direct select white arrow select the opposite points and now you can do a corner radius. To create that shape. So I'm going to copy my shape, go into Photoshop, new document, you do want RGB mode to work with 3D, paste in your object as a smart object, and go to 3D new 3D extrusion from layer. It may ask you to open up the 3D workspace and that would be fine. Now for shape presets, all we need to do is scale down our extrusion depth because if we look at it now, we've got a really deep... So this piece is going to act as our plastic. Now we're going to go to 3D, export 3D layer as a .obj, and 
back in Dimension, let's import the model. If, it, if you don't see it right away, be sure to change your positioning to 0, 0. Also make sure your box is at 0, 0. So where is... Okay, here is our object. Let's get that scale larger. And try to place this right in front of the box. If there's an angle to the box, just look at your positioning. In this one, I don't have any rotation. Let's say I did have a 10, and you needed to match that rotation. Go to your object and give it a 10 for the Y axis. Okay, that is. for a different side. So I guess it depends on which side you're basing it off of. Okay, in this case, I did 90 and added the 10. You can see this method's a lot more complicated. Eventually, once I get this placed, we can group them and rotate them together. You can also position using numbers if that's easier. An issue I'm noticing now with this method is I'm not able to have the decal covering that window. So just a second here. So 
So whereas before I had part of the wheat covering that window, now it's not. But you can see at this point, I can apply a glass texture separately to this object. So that could appear more plastic-like. And then we can duplicate Command-D. And we could label these to make it easier on ourselves. And in this instance, I'm going to create a decal for below the window with the pasta layer. And we don't even need the shape if we're going to apply it as a decal. We can just take the image, go into Photoshop and save it. So now I can apply the pasta decal to that shape. I'm going to change this material to a non-glass just so it hopefully takes less time to render. Now we can scale the decal. You can see with having the object, there's some weird stuff going on too. So this is still being really weird. I think your best bet is to create the die cut appearance as part of the whole design or else take it into Photoshop, which I think is going to give you a crisper end result that's higher quality. And you can add more depth if you need to create a, a mask. So another option for Photoshop would be to paste in your graphic without the die cut. Paste in your shape separately. And then paste in your pasta image.
because that way we have more flexibility to modify our the scale of that food in the background. And your image is going to be much higher quality if you can just save out the angle of what you'd like to render from dimension. Please feel free to reach out if you have questions about this or anything else in the Adobe Suite. And if this video helped you out, please like the video and subscribe. Thanks for watching.